All right, everyone. Welcome back to From the Stands. Josh B. and Alex Goldman here, joined very luckily this afternoon by a fellow Aussie and Ben Johnston. So, Ben, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, man. How you doing? Good, man. Yeah, yeah. Really good. Just had a hard session, so... Yeah, still exactly. kind of buzzing from that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, you know, look, man, um, you know, I want to get straight into it. So I was wondering if you could talk me through, you know, what are the advantages that you think, you know, come with being, you know, a younger coach in the game? You know, is it that you're sort of more on tap to the challenges that your students are facing, you know, in this sort of current world? Or, you know, do you think that being a younger coach allows you to have a more open mindset to changing and adapting as, you know, some older coaches can be quite set in their ways? What do you think the advantage of being a younger coach is? Yeah. No, you're, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head, man. It's like um, you have to test your theories, you know. Like if you, if you, if you have a I think this is going to work and you're always like looking at how your fighters go and, and the problems they encounter when they're fighting um, and you've got to learn from your fighters when you're a coach. Like a lot of coaches aren't on the mats anymore. You know, they're not training anymore. So they're like watching their fighters and then they say, oh, okay, there's this thing that happened in this fight and we got – stuck with this position or this detail or this strike or whatever it might be. I have a theory about how to fix that. Sometimes you got to like touch and feel your theory. You know, you've actually got to test it yourself and see whether like what's the problem with your theory. If it's, if it, if it, if it's not working, is it not working because you're not executing it right or is it because it's just the wrong solution to a problem? You know what I mean? Mm. Um, so being – still fighting it like forces me to actively participate in it you know um and i even i even even sometimes think about it like you know look no one's going to fight forever um so say say 10 years time it's very likely i'm not going to be fighting in 10 years time you know yeah um i've got to i've got to plan ahead for that and just go look i've got to make it habitual no matter what i'm doing i've got to stay on the mats um to test all my test my theories basically because i don't want to be giving people bullshit you know yeah yeah 100 ben um speaking on that coaching um aspect of things la you know a month and a half ago i think we saw a great australian mma story and chelsea hackett returning after you know a three-year layoff and and picking up a, a massive massive win it was a, a very I, I didn't see the submission coming i thought she might finish her on the feet and, and, and you know endless to say she got the the submission finish what how proud were you as a coach to see that um uh, to, uh, to be a part of it, obviously, it's been a long journey for Chelsea since she, you know, her last fight of the Contender Series to come back and and win in such, you know, emphatic fashion. What was that like for you as a coach to be a part of that? No, nah, bro, it, it, extremely rewarding. Um, but you like you got to remember, Chelsea's she's been doing this a long time before she mm. came to us. You know, mm. um, I would like to think that we helped. You know, I'd like to think that her being here was played played a role, and it was cool that you know. She did a lot of the stuff that we were working on leading in, but man, you know, she takes all the credit. She, mm. her, and her, and her, you know, her dad especially, he's been taking yeah. her all around and you know, f- pushing her for the last over a decade. You know, yeah. mm. um, so we were just like a little bit of the icing on the on the cake. I feel just to just to refine the strategy. She had all the tools already. Yeah. Mm. I was like, all right, well, let's work on this particular thing at this in this position. You know, yeah. Um, and you know, over here, it's fun. Funnily enough, man, we do a lot of we do a lot of grappling. Yeah. Um, so the girl she was fighting was quite dangerous on the feet. Like mm. she's a bit of a, you know, she was pretty keen to make it messy. Yeah. Um, and sometimes with those people, even though you may have the advantage on the feet, like Chelsea yeah. is clearly a world class striker. The other girl is good enough that there's always that risk that you can get knocked out, you know? Yeah, yeah. So when that happens, sometimes even though you might be better on your feet, it's a smarter option to take them down because it, it mitigates all the risk of them landing just that one shot. Yeah. Mm, definitely. So, you know, look, obviously, you know, the advantage that, you know, you would have, you know, training at times with city kickboxing in regards to helping your striking, you know, obviously, you know, that's quite obvious, but I was wondering if you could sort of speak to some of the other things that you've been able to pick up when, you know, dropping into city kickboxing or working with some of the guys, you know, whether it's approaches to coaching, approaches to training, or even approaches to recovery, what are sort of some of the other things that you've been able to pick up there? Um, the I think the biggest thing you take away, like the, the biggest thing I always think when I go to city kickboxing is like 
their culture is like just their camaraderie and their like how tight everyone is in the gym is I've never seen anything like it. You know, mm. um, they really show up for each other. Um, and it, yeah, like I, I like to think we got a good, good little thing going on here too. If you go over there, you're like, wow, like these guys are, they, they love each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. so you're like, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty cool. I, I really, I really like that. And the fact that, you know, I come over and now, you know, I've been there, I've been going there for a couple of years now. Pardon me. Um, I've been going there for a couple of years now, and you know, you, you feel I feel the love when I go there, and I'm like, mm. I'm, I'm not obviously I'm not like some of the guys who've been there for ten years. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're there every day, but you know, you de- you're definitely feeling like, oh man. And also, another thing I I, I really noticed is, um, they pay it forward. You know, like mm. guys yeah. like Israel get the opportunity. He was probably once upon a time not so lucky and wealthy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he makes sure to if he's going up, he's he's getting the other he's, giving the yeah. other boys a taste of it along the way, you know. Yeah. Um that's huge. And huge you Eugene is, you know, he's he's a he facilitates all that and makes sure everyone gets gets looked after and, you know, uh invest in the invest in the guys that are investing back in the team, you know. Yeah, definitely. And on that as well, Ben, I mean when we saw you and Eugene at, at Eternal 77, uh, you know, two months ago now, um, you know, I asked Eugene about you and, and your performance and what he sees as, you know, your ceiling. And, and he was, you know, very complimentary on your skills, obviously, you know, coming from a Muay Thai background and, and that sort of things. He was very complimentary of you in the, in the sport of MMA and that you have a, a big future and that you have a massive ceiling in, in the game. Um, guys like, you know, Alex Pereira and, and, and Izzy as well, you know, who have come from kickboxing, to you know now become a middleweight champion in the ufc is that something that that inspires you or is that some uh, guys you would like to emulate in that role where you know you one day have that shirt on and that 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 that, that, you know that shirt says johnston on the back of it yeah i mean absolutely bro like um it's it's a funny one man because it, it 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 seems it it all seems so far away but it never is. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like it. It always seems like well, I'm I'm fighting. It's like it. Don't get me wrong. Eternal's a great a great promotion. Like it's the best. It's the best thing over here, over Australia, and New Zealand for sure. Mm. Um. But it's like you know I haven't spoken to anyone from the UFC. They're not like sending contracts or anything. So you you kind of just stand around. You kind of just waiting and hoping. So it's like, oh, fuck, you know, thinking about it like a world championship for, for like the UFC title, for instance. If you were thinking about that, you're like, that's so far away, I can't even. Yeah, contextual. You can't yeah. even, you know, yeah. it's, it's not, it's not, it's too big to grasp. It's too far away to grasp. But really, you know, you start winning a couple of fights and then some, and, and if an offer comes along, it's like, holy shit, here it is. Yeah, definitely. But just, you know, you just keep on climbing and take it one fight at a time. But yeah, man, absolutely. Like, do I want to be in the UFC? One hundred percent. You know, that's why yeah. I'm doing it. That's that's why we're all doing it. You know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, look, Ben. You know, you're scheduled to fight. You know, Jan Sochin at uh, you know Eternal Seventy Nine. Your first international opponent for MMA. Does it add any sort of extra intrigue to the fight? You know, having an opponent where it might be harder to find footage on them, or you know, it might be a bit more difficult to ask around the grapevine around you know what they're good at. You know, maybe what they're not so good at. Does that add any sort of you know extra you know intrigue or motivation heading into the fight? Yeah, bro, it's funny. Like, in some ways, it's easier because you just there's there's not much I can watch. You know, mm-hmm. his name's like from my eyes, it's just a bunch of squiggles. You know, it's like <laughs> I can't really I can't really Google him. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. yeah. So it's it, yeah, I got there's it's pretty hard to find any footage. So you know, I just have to worry about what I'm doing. Um, yeah. So it, it actually makes it a lot easier because, like, what yeah. if he does this? What if they do that? And then you make it a game. It's like, look, it is what it is. Uh, there's not much, there's not anything I can look at. There's not much I can find. So I just go, yeah. all right. Well, I have a general game plan that I would sort of implement for almost every opponent. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and the and you're gonna lean into certain aspects for one guy more than another. Yeah. Um, but overall, like, take Izzy for example, he's not pulling guard one fight, and then you you know what I mean. He, yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. Fights yeah. pretty well the same most fights, and you could yeah. say that about all all of these guys. Like, yeah. they have a general strategy they employ for all all guys, and then it's like, 
now that I, I don't have, I can't find much on the other guy, I can just really double down on that and just do what I do well mm. and uh, obviously always improve the overall skill set. Yeah, speaking on that, you, you know, you are in the main event as well um, of this Eternal card and, you know, in your fourth Pro MMA fight, I know if there's a Muay Thai background there, but, you know, with, with the, for your fourth Pro MMA fight and your your main eventing um, an Eternal card, I think is, is, is a great achievement for you. Um, is there any extra pressure going into this considering you're in the main event or is this just another fight? No, I mean, no, there's no extra pressure, bro. It's, I mean, this isn't um, – this might sound cocky, but it's not. It's nothing new, you know. I mean, I've been yeah. doing this for fifteen years. Mm. I've been headlining shows for ten years. Yeah, you know. Um, so no, um, nah, it doesn't change anything, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, look, last one for me today, anyway, man. You know, we don't want to keep you too long. Don't want to keep too much of your time. But you know, a lot of varying opinions have sort of come out around the main event of UFC two ninety three. You know, some people saying that Izzy looked off. And, you know, others are kind of a bit upset that that narrative's kind of been put out there because they feel it takes away from Sean Strickland's performance. But I wanted to know, you know, what were your thoughts on that fight, you know, if you had the opportunity to watch it? And where do you stand on that idea that, you know, do you think Izzy looked off or do you think that Sean simply had a great night? Man, I think both of those things can be true, right? Like, Mm. and uh, man, look, uh, like, I don't know if you can hear that baby crying out there. No, no, no you're good. Sorry. Hey, you're right, man. Sorry. Yeah. Right, so man. yeah, like I think both of those things are true, man. Like you know, if if Izzy's if Izzy's average is here and Sean's average is here, just for you know ease of yeah. numbers, and then Izzy has diminished a uh, diminished night by twenty percent and it drops down to here or even yeah. there, and then yeah. Sean just really shows up, you yeah. know. Both of the both of those things can be true, mm. um, but like you know, man. Look, don't get me wrong. I, I love Izzy, and um, yeah, I, but I'm not in the room. With yeah. The you know, so I don't know. I don't know what what the game plan was and whether he executed it and all that sort of stuff. Those, you know, that's I'm not in that circle, bro. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not like they're hiding it from me, but I'm not getting consulted, so yeah. I, I I couldn't really I couldn't really speak to that too much. But just from like me watching as like a friend and a fan mm. and you know a teammate, um, <laughs> yeah, is he had a, had a bad night, bro? You yeah. know, yeah. you see him in the you see him in the gym and see what he shows up with, and then like you see just how he performed, you know, in his previous hundred fights, yeah. Um, you have to make a pretty good guess that that's not that's not the normal Israel Adesanya, you know. Yeah. yeah. Like how many lo- how many losses has he had? I don't know. You know, I know he, he might have had a little bit of a bad run lately, but you have to look at like what he's done in his whole throughout his whole career. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. I 100 percent agree on that. Um, ben, last question, man, from from us today is. Um, you know, last weekend the middleweight title for Eternal um, fell out, unfortunately, with um, you know that 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 title now being vacated. Um, is that a fight that after you know this fight next Sunday or Saturday at Eternal seventy nine? Is that a fight that you would be pushing for to to fight for that Eternal middleweight title? Because I think, like I've spoken to many Eternal guys before, that you know once having that belt, that does sort of catapult you quite quickly. I think. In the UFC's eyes, um, you know, a lot of guys that have become, you know, former eternal champions have gone on to, to you know, reach the UFC. Is that something that you'd be pushing for after this fight next Saturday? Man, I'll leave that with, I'll leave that with my coaches, you know. Mm. Um, sorry, sorry, it's not a very exciting. No, 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 sports. that's okay. No, um, that's, you don't have to give us anything. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, but I'll just, I'll just leave that with the coaches, but i let it happen mm. because you got to remember Brogan's fighting for that. Mm. Um, yeah. And I'm not going to challenge Brogan for it. He's he's mm. the man, you know. Yeah, of course. Um, he, he's he's my teammate, and I'm there yep. to support him. Yeah. So if he wins it and he holds it, all good, brother. You're the champ, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, I'll I'll play whatever role I play in the team or in the in the division or in the promotion. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'll just wait and see what happens, bro. You yeah. Know, I'll yeah. wait and see. I'll wait and see who wins, and then we'll we'll go from there. It's yeah. too hard to think ahead of all the scenarios when 
yeah, yeah you know. nah, there's there is a lot of things that that weigh up. I understand that hundred percent. Well, Ben, it's um it's been a pleasure, man. I really pre- we we both really appreciate your time today. Um, we are very much looking forward to seeing you next Saturday at Eternal Seventy Nine. And um, man, we'd love to talk to you. And we'll obviously talk to you next next Saturday after most likely after a win. I'm I'm sure. And, uh, <laughs> very yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll see you next next Saturday, man. Yeah, good on you, boys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate Thank it, you, man. man. See ya.